Uh, hello, this is a note about using the OpenCPN weather routing plugin. And it is going to be just sort of direct and to, to the point of uh, making a, um, a computation. And then I'll come back and uh, look at some nuances. Uh, the main thing is I have an article here online about this. And this article discusses, the first part discusses, discusses the role of this weather routing function and its value and, its, um, and the cautions we have to take. And then it lists six points with this red note that if your computation with this plugin fails, fails to work, then it's probably one of the six things above that you should check to be sure. Then, step by step, there's this procedure. And that's what we're going to follow today. Now, I've started this movie here about four times. And each time I try to discuss some nuances and some, you know, some interactions and things like that. And every time I've done that, I got kind of tied up. And these nuances are discussed in this article here. But this time, I'm not going to show the optional ways to do things or um, uh, any kind of nuances for now. We're going to crank this thing out, get a route going, then when that's done and sa saved and posted online, then we could come back and look at uh, discussing nuances. Okay, so here's the procedures right here to that we're going to follow. Here's the program. You load then in, in, in new ver. Oh, first of all, you need to be sure to update the latest version of OpenCPN, and then in the plugins in the plugins folder in the back you should see these all these options here for loading the plugins and down here weather routing <coughs> weather routing and you just click it and install it that's all there's to it if these don't all show up here then update the plugin catalog master with this a very nice new feature that uh, is a way that brings all these wonderful plugins in in there and you load them as you need them or unload them. Okay, so you load the load the plugin and, say, and then hit apply and say okay. Now we're here. So we want to do a test route again. We've been doing routes, uh, test routes, uh, several cases, and you'll you'll see a, a series of those. But for now, let's just take any. I'm going to do it again. I'm doing it the way I recommend, and uh, not saying why or um, discussing options. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to drop a mark. And I'm going to go into, and then I right click it, and see it highlights it, and properties, and I'm going to give it a name, PT point A. And I don't like that triangle too much. I'm going to just, this is obviously not important, uh, but I'm going to give it a little red dot. And then I want everything to be red dots, so I click this gear and say make the icons red dots. OK. Good to go. Now I'm going to make another one right down here, say, and I drop a waypoint, drop a mark. And look, I got my red dot. And then I give it a name. And this is going to be point B. OK? So my job will be to go from point A to point B uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in a certain wind pattern. And uh, normally, what you would do to get your wind at this point is you would go to the grib file. And then, uh, then where is that? And then you could go in here and say, I'm going to make a wind, and I'd get something like that. So you see, that includes both A and B, which is required. If you do it just like this, it's not going to route from A to B. You do it like this, it's not. You got to have them. It's got to cover both, and it's got to extend out long enough to get from A to B with your polar diagrams. But I'm not going to do this because it's winter now. It's February, and this is not the ocean that you're going to be sailing across there. So what we've got is some older data. I'm going to quit that and go in here, and I have some data stored, which is from here. This is uh, reanalyzed data from 2010, uh, July the 4th, 2010, out about 20 days, 16 days. And so that's the grib file we're going to use that we've been using for our test cases and uh, so forth. So we want to go from here to here. Now, I wanna, I'm going to start, just to be sure I have enough data, I'm going to start at day one, I mean, at the first forecast, equivalent to the, the, the uh, service analysis. And then, I, then I've got 20 days out of here. I'm easily going to get from here to here, unless I'm in a really slow boat. And then we're going to use a Cal 40 for this. OK. So what is next? Next, we've got to get these into the, let's open the plugin. Let's, I've got to, OK, now we're, let's look at the plugin. We know where we want to go. And so we, we've got the plugin. 
And what I want to do is a plug-in. This is the main plug-in panel. Um, now, I don't know if I haven't said this yet on this. <laughs> I've done it four times here and failed. But um, when you click this, you see it puts a, this is the Macintosh. The Macintosh has got the toolbar up here. So you see, if I'm clear down here, I can be working over here somewhere like this on my computer. And when I click this, the toolbar I need is way up here, way up here. So don't forget where that is and, uh, and so forth. And uh, that's what we need. So I need to get those points, these two points, into this list of positions. That's the way this works. You have to have your all positions you're going to route from are in here. And so one way to get them in is just I can right right click this. Now when I right click it, be sure that it highlights so it knows that I've got the right point. In other words, if I right click over here. It's, it's asking me to make a new position or, you know, whatever. I want to be sure that I get mine. So I right-click right on the top of that property. Oh, no, wait a minute. I right-click. It highlights. Now I say weather route position. And you see, bang, it's right here now. So that's good to go. I come down here, right-click. It's highlighted, point B, weather route position. So I've got my two weather route positions. I've got my wind set up to the beginning. Okay, that's good to go. Now I can now I make the configuration that we're going to use. So you go up to the configuration menu. Uh, okay. Oh, what I was going to show one. Let me just see if I've got that here. Just as a side, this is what the Windows version looks like. The Windows version has these menus, the menu that you care about, position, configure, and view. These are the main ones. They are tied right to this window. So they're a lot easier. You don't get confused. If you're on a Mac, you have to remember that you have to hit this to activate these up here. Okay, that's that. And this is the, this is, these things you can actually, that's the controls for that uh, grip. You can move those clear over to the side if you want to. Okay, now we got to go here and we want to make a new configuration. A configuration um, new. Okay, and once that pops up here, I want to start. I, I got to go. See, clicking here doesn't do it, but click here and then I want to start at point A. That's my start point. Here's my end point, and that's going to be point B. One hour step, I think that's a default. Oh, again, we're not going to play too much with, we're not going to play with details at all here, but one hour step in the computation of the isochrones, that's a pretty good, um, I'm not exactly, he may do one hour every time. Some programs will start out slower, change it, and then slow back down again as they get closer to the mark, but that's, we're not looking into that right now. We're going to go with grib files. Um, and I would just disable disable the climatology and disable this. We want to we want real grib grib winds. We don't want to uh, use artificial data. Okay, part A. Now, if I I set, I set that I set this thing. Whoop! You can't see it. Okay, I set this thing to. Um, the beginning of the grib file, that's fine. That's where I want to go. So I can just hit grib time, and that's 7, 4, 20, 10. That's correct. Now um, now we have to do the, um, the uh, weather routing boat plugin failed. Oh, OK, that's fine. Um, well, it doesn't matter. OK, so when you first, that's interesting. I thought I've done this before on this machine. OK, so but when you first download and install this, you won't see these necessarily. But I believe but the, the program comes with a bunch of when you OK, when you come back, when you click this button, edit, we've got a here's where we're going to have to load our polar diagram. So we have the right polar diagram. And the article that I referred to, this article over there, hidden away now, that article discusses the polar diagrams in, in detail. OK, and so, but we have to edit. That's the way we get it in. Polar failed. OK, failed. So when you open this up, it's going to have a bunch of polar diagrams in here that are the stock ones that come with the, with, with the program. Now, that doesn't mean anything. That's just for testing. But so we want to get rid of whatever shows up in here. So let me just try control A. No, that doesn't work. Oh, what did that do? OK, uh, that doesn't work. Failed. OK, let me just shift. OK, I want to just delete, remove all of those. OK, I don't I don't want any polars in here. Now I want to add 
And then I've got to navigate to my polar. And I think actually this is it. It's the it's a polar for a Cal 40 that I got from Expedition. I converted it to the polar format and it has comma separators. Okay, that's right. That's good. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, but here's what that looks like in a graph. You can also do things like edit and then look at the numbers and numbers and, and so forth. There's a lot of uh, very nice tools here uh, to do that. So that's the polar diagram we want. You got a picture of it here. Like I say, you could, you could see that the numbers are right by clicking that button, cancel, and so forth. Now we want to save as boat. And um, then the name that I chose was just so I, I know what, exactly what polar it was. But you have to give it a name like that, right? And it'll always be XML. And uh, so that's that. I'll replace it. No, just cancel. I can cancel. OK, so I've got mine in there already. And so we're done here. We've got that done. Now we got to come back out here, though, and check to see that it's right. They're always going to be, this is, you read the article. Oh, no, it's not right. Okay. So when is, that's fine. That's good. It's not right. Somehow that trick didn't, that didn't work. So I'm going to just click and go in and get it. That's the one I want. Because they, these boats, these are just various boats that you've assigned either one polar diagram or you may have three or four. Remember back in that diagram, I could have three or four polar diagrams. I could have a polar diagram for low wind, high wind, one for big waves, no waves. You know, I could have one for racing and for delivery, you know, things like that. So you can have a whole bunch of polar diagrams, and they're all piled into one boat. But we only have one diagram, and it's in this boat, and that's okay. So I'm going to apply that. Now I've got to check here to see, okay. They, and they, these all have to be in the right place, and that's discussed in the article. Routing boats, boat, expedition, Cal 40, polar, comma. That's right. So we're good to go, starting there, starting there. That all looks good. Point A to B. Uh, OK, this is grib. We want grib disabled. OK, close. Now um, we should be ready to go. Let's see. Oh, I, I've added several things. The default, well, I have a bunch of things I added to this list, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. But they won't be there. This list won't quite that be the, quite this long when you go. But anyway, not computed. Now let's compute. Now it's computing. And so if we go back here, you see it's then creating the isochrones, uh, the isochrones for that route. And um, and you can zoom in and look at it. Um, or roll and zoom out. And this, what this is, what the, you see how the cursor is floating around. Let me come back. Several programs do this. Um, but it's just showing you what the route would be. If you wanted to get to this point in time and space, you would go that way, the best way to get there. If you wanted to go to this point in time and space, that's the best way to get there. And the best way to get to your destination is obviously uh, right along that line right there. Right there. OK, good. Good to go. All right, so it computed it. Now, if you want to see the boat move along there, and read conditions. There's various ways you can do that. Let, maybe before I come to that, let's go back here and just a few notes. This says uh, it's completed. Now you have to say, if you say export, normally that means you're exporting outside of the program, uh, like a GPX. But that's not what it means here, as far as I can tell. When you hit export here, bang, it moves it to the this program manager over here uh, as a track, as a track. So here's the weather route we just did. And let me just go in here. Well, let's see. How do I do that? I'm going to double click it. I'm just, now I'm going to give it a name, point A to point B. So I've done that. That all works. OK, OK. 
So now it's there. Now you can convert that. This, it doesn't show up as a route. It's just a track. And but you can, if you don't save it this way, when you close, this com computation will be gone. So you have to get over here and save it. And you can then convert this if you want to. You could say uh, route to track like that, and then you will have now a route that is A to B, and this is now a route. And the this route you can export as a GPX. Let's over here. Export selected. This export now will actually send this out to where you want to as a GPX file in a route format. This one goes out, export, export selected will go out as a GPX in a track format. So the GPX can be track or route. And you can then, uh, well, this might be your navigation program or you could export this and actually import it into a handheld, into your handheld GPS uh, just as a backup. Now you have to read the manual on your handheld GPS how you do that, but the idea is you could load that right into several GPS units so you have a backup a backup navigation system or you have a console GPS system then you can load this program into that um, let's see here what else I might okay so that's done that's in there and then you can um, let's look at a couple other things one of the things you have to be sure that that that, that works is that the wind does not exceed the wind in your polar diagram. Uh, in other words, if your polar diagram only has wind speeds up to 20 knots and you hit 25 knots, then it might not, it might not run. Now with this program, let's see if I can do it even here. If I just like right click here and say, oh yeah, weather table. Okay, so I right click there and this is looking at the wind speed at that point as a function of time. You see, uh, well, there's 20, 22. Now look at that, that's 24. Now this polar diagram only had 20 knots of wind, so it tolerated 24. Oh, maybe, well, I don't know where I looked. Uh, let me look right on the route. Well, the other thing you can do too is, you can zoom in here, you can zoom in, and then go back to, to the beginning at, the, at this one, go back to the beginning. And now, let me zoom in a little bit more. Now, if you step through here, oh, I don't see it very well. Uh, I don't see the boat moving along there. Um, These should be moving. We should be able to see that moving. I'm not sure why that's not working right this minute. I have to come back in the subtlety section and look into that. Uh, but that's normally been working. There's other ways you can do this. Look here. Let me click this to get my tools. Click this. Go up to view. And then I can look at report. That's just a quick not, is that the report? Yeah, that's just telling you a, a few text things about how fast the average speed was and what the distance was and so forth. That you can put here. The number of things that you show in this write-up here, in this write-up, is determined by view settings. And then this table here, you choose what goes in here. You see, so that's got distance, average speed, and so forth, right? And this is visible or not visible. Okay, so that's where that's there. And visible or not visible, like if I click here, that's visible, and then oh, close. Point A to point B. That's visible, it's not visible. Huh, I don't know. That's not working as I thought it did. Okay, so then the other thing you've got, one other thing to take a quick look at is view, plot, plot. Now this, this shows along the route, along the route, um, what the data, what the, what the, you choose the data you wanna look at along that computed route. Whoops, I can't move that, or can I, yeah. Well, look at that. Okay, along the computed route, this is the, oh wait, the current route. So this is showing the data, course over ground, 
wind direction. Okay, let me say I want to look at the speed over ground. So there I'm seeing the speed over ground as a function of the, um, and then I can spread this out. I can spread it out to look at different parts of the race, of the track, and then this will move it down the line. You see that way. So anyway, that's a way to look at the one set of data. Then the other thing is you can also look at a cursor route. So now you're looking at, well, wait a minute. Let me, I've got this thing spread out too far. Okay, now you're looking at, a, at the cursor like that. So that's another way to look at it, ways to look at it. Well, I think I'll stop there. That's the, the basic functionalities. We got it saved, and um, uh, I'll come back. And uh, there's a whole bunch of nuances one can do with this. But yeah, I think if you follow those procedures uh, and you monitor those six points in the article, the routes will work. I'm going to stop.